Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we are going to cover some of the basic anatomic landmarks as seen on a CBCT scan or a CT scan of the craniofacial region. We will identify landmarks on axial, sagittal, and coronal slices. So without much delay, let's proceed. Because many radiographic features are subtle, I recommend that you watch this video on a large screen, ideally a desktop screen. However, instead of keeping at the default YouTube size, you may want to fill up the whole screen. A desktop screen is best to see the details on a radiograph. A laptop screen is also good. If you want, you may also watch it on a tablet. If you watch these videos on a smartphone, you may not get the best benefit. These videos are created at a 4K resolution. If possible, please watch it at the highest resolution. Before we learn the anatomic landmarks, let us understand how to view a CBCT scan. I'm using a software called On Demand 3D. Other CBCT software will have similar but not identical interface. There are three ways of looking at a CBCT scan. First, we can look at the CBCT data as slices. So these images represent slices or sections. Each image represents a part of the anatomy. In this case, these are representing one or a few teeth. The other way of looking at a CBCT scan is a reconstructed radiograph. So this is a reconstructed panoramic radiograph. On this panoramic radiograph, you can see multiple vertical blue lines. Each of these lines represent one of the sections here. As I put my cursor on this slice, you can see one of the vertical blue line on the reconstructed panoramic radiograph has changed color to red. So this slice represents maxillary maxillary right second molar. This one represents maxillary right first molar. If I scroll through these images, this image now represents maxillary right canine. And this image represents maxillary right central incisor. The sections are usually most accurate and most detailed views of a CBCT data. Whenever we are lost, we can use these fine blue lines or crosshairs to orient ourselves. You can also use your anatomy knowledge to locate yourself on the scan. The third way of looking at a CBCT scan is volume rendering. This image represents a surface rendering. You are seeing the surfaces of the jaws. There is another way of looking at the volume rendering and it is the semi-transparent rendering. Let me show you how. This is semi-transparent rendering. If I rotate the head, you can see the vertebrae through the ramus. The surface rendering is not the ideal way of interpreting CBCT scans. If you change the threshold, you can start to lose bone or add other structures. Let me show you an example. If I under threshold the scan, you can see that I'm losing bone. Obviously, this is not true loss of bone. If I over threshold, you may see that we are adding tissues, mostly soft tissues. The primary way of looking at a CBCT scan or a CT scan is using the multiplanar reconstruction or MPR. This is the standard view. There are three anatomic planes coronal, sagittal, and axial. The coronal view is as if you are standing in front of the patient. 
your left side is patient's right side. The axial plane is a view standing at the foot of the patient's. The patient's nose is pointing up. The sagittal view is from the side of the patient. There are fine crosshairs. You can use your knowledge of anatomy as well as the crosshair to understand the location of the slices. We'll be using these MPR views to learn the anatomy. This video is about the basic anatomic landmarks. Today we'll learn only a few landmarks. These landmarks are required learning for first year dental, first year dental hygiene, and first year dental therapy students at the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry. There is one more orientation of looking at a CBCT scan. This is called a custom slice, and as the name implies, you can make a slice in any orientation instead of coronal, sagittal, and axial views. Since the mandible is a curved bony structure, frequently we'll be using a custom slice to create a slice along the length of the mandible. Here is an example. On a different window of the software, I'm creating a custom slice. Currently, this custom slice is only 0 mm thick. I may want to increase the thickness of this tissue to include more tissue volume. These slices are very useful to locate the inferior alveolar canal, the root canals, as well as the orientation of the implants. Now let us learn some of the anatomic landmarks on the coronal view. Let me start from the tip of the nose. So this will be the tip of the nose. To help us in learning, let me make this window larger. Let me also remove the crosshair from the midline to see the landmarks a little better. Let me also remove the horizontal crosshair. I'm moving distally. Picking up the lips, anterior teeth, and let's stop here. We can see several landmarks. This radiolucent band at the midline of the maxilla is the nasopalatine canal or the incisive canal. This is the floor of the nasal fossa. We are seeing the inferior nasal turbinates. This is the common nasal meatus. As we continue to go distally, we pick up more structures. This is the genial tubercle on the mandible. As we are moving distally, we can appreciate the heart palate. We have started picking up the maxillary sinuses, so let's look at the maxillary sinuses a little better. Let's stop here. The left maxillary sinus, the right maxillary sinus. To understand that this is the right side, all the software will have some kind of indication. So this is R, so this side will be right side. F stands for foot of the patient or the inferior part of the body. Inferior turbinates, middle turbinates. We have the orbits, right orbit, left orbit. This is the crista galli. I came back anteriorly to show you another landmark. This is the mental foramen. So let's go back, keep going back. Let's stop here. This narrow passage is called the osteomyotal unit. This is the drainage path of the maxillary sinuses. We started picking up the zygomatic arch.
coming anteriorly. I'll show you a few more structures. These are the ethmoid AR cells. Let's continue going back distally. And here we picked up the sphenoid sinus. The sphenoid sinus has two compartments, one larger than the other, and, and this would be the septum. Either the left side or the right side would be larger. On this slice, we can also see the pterygoid plates. This is the lateral pterygoid plate and medial pterygoid plate of the left side. And this is the lateral pterygoid plate on the right side. This is the zygomatic arch. Now we are in the region of the mandibular ramus. So this would be the coronoid process. Going further distally, we picked up one more structure and this is the hyoid bone. Because this is a slice, we are not seeing the whole curved structure. Let me move anteriorly back and here you can see the continuous of the hyoid bone. If we bring the cross hair, you can see the hyoid bone here. Let me make this image, the axial view larger. So this is the hyoid. Going back to the coronal slice. This is the middle cranial fossa. There are several important foramina here and we'll skip those foramina now because this is a basic anatomic landmark lecture. Now we have picked up the mandibular condyles. We also started picking up the cervical vertebrae. So this is cervical vertebra 2, C2, and this is the odontoid process. Moving further distally, we can see the external auditory canals or the ear canals. So this is the ear lobe. Further distally, we see the mastoid ear cells. And that's the soft tissue of the ear. Now let us look at the axial slices. And as you can see from this cross here, we are inferior to the mandible. So this is an area inferior to the mandible we picked up the cervical vertebra and then we are picking up the hyoid bone. So as we go superiorly, we picked up more of the hyoid bone and started picking up the inferior border of the mandible. The dark area is the oropharyngeal airway. Here we can see the genial tubercle. And this is the depression of the genial tubercle. As you can recall from an intraoral radiographic anatomy, because of this depression, the genial tubercle has a bullseye appearance. This is the buccal cortical plate. And this is the lingual cortical plate of the mandible. And this is the trabecular bone or the cancellous bone. This is the mental foramen. And we started picking up the roots of the mandibular teeth. This is the area of the lingula. And we are picking up part of the tongue. This is the odontoid process. We had seen odontoid process earlier on a coronal slice. So let me show you again on the coronal view. So this is the same area that we are looking at. This is the odontoid process. So the odontoid process is here. Another bone we see barely 
is this one and this is the styloid process. We have picked up the ear lobe and we are picking up the maxillary arch. On the maxillary arch at the midline, we can see the nasopalatine canal. So this is the nasopalatine canal. In this area, we can also see a few more structures. Lateral pterygoid plate, medial pterygoid plate, lateral pterygoid plate. We started picking up the condyles. These are the mastoid air cells. This is the heart palate. This is a soft tissue density mass and we'll talk about this in the fall semester. This is the coronoid process. Left coronoid process, right coronoid process, right condyle and left condyle. This is the external auditory canal of the left side. This is turbinate, right turbinate, and the left turbinate, and we started picking up the maxillary sinuses. And this would be the soft tissue outline of the nose. Going further superiorly, we have picked up the zygomatic arch, and this is the zygomatic arch. Here is the nasolacrimal canal. This would be the sphenoid sinus. If you recall, the sphenoid sinus has two compartments divided by a septum. And this is the orbit, right orbit, left orbit. Between the two orbits, we have the ethmoid air cells. This area is the cellar tarsica or pituitary fossa. Further superiorly, this is the frontal bone. This patient is young and has not formed the frontal sinus yet. Let's review a few landmarks on the sagittal sections. As you can see, the crosshair is at the level of the left ear canal. So we are looking at the ear canal right here. This is the mastoid ear cells. We picked up the condyle and the coronoid process and looking at my reference line which is this blue cross here, I know that this is the left condyle and left coronoid process. This is the external auditory canal. Between the condyle and the coronoid process, we have the sigmoid notch. We have the left maxillary sinus. This soft tissue density mass is a disease process and we'll talk about this in the fall semester. We have picked up the left orbit. These are the ethmoid ear cells, inferior turbinate and middle turbinate. At the midline of the head, we have several more structures that we can recognize. This is the sphenoid sinus. Superior to the sphenoid sinus, we have the cella tarsica. We are seeing the heart palate, and with heart palate, we see the soft palate. This is the dorsum of the tongue. If you draw a line from the heart palate on the distal aspect of the pharynx, this area is the nasopharyngeal airway. From the heart palate, down here is the oropharyngeal airway. This concludes our unit on basic CBCT anatomy. Thank you very much for staying with me and learning the cross-sectional anatomy of the maxillofacial region as seen on a CBCT scan. Thank you very much.